Yeah, I think that we have to get a little quieter, a little stiller before we begin to notice it. Mm. Otherwise, mostly what we're sort of aware of is just the way it makes us feel, which is often we feel shitty, we feel put down, we feel deficient, we feel not good enough. And so we do all these things to combat that. Welcome to Mindful Monday. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to give a reminder, if you haven't already seen yesterday's Soul Food Sunday on Everyday Alex, please do check it out. It's a interview with Ranu Aurora, who was run over by a bus two and a half years ago. And she talks about the, the kind of the shock of that, but also she had a near-death experience as a result of it. And despite the fact that the physical injuries have been life-changing in terms of um, disability in her life, she's used the experience in a very inspiring and positive way. So if you haven't checked that interview out, please do. Um, That was episode 21 of Everyday Alex, which came out yesterday. Also, if you entered the competition to win a copy of Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, we are going to pick the winner today. And we'll announce that um, on that original video, but we'll also film the picking of the winner on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, then that's a great place. In addition to the daily episodes of Everyday Alex, I also do various musings and kind of ideas and quotes and Instagram stories. And if you want to see a bit of um, the kind of my life, (laughs) I guess that's a a place to to go a little bit uh, more personal, I guess. So... For this week's uh, Mindful Monday, we have a clip from an interview with Tejo Jordan. Tejo is a teacher of the Diamond Approach. And I was thinking particularly about Tejo and the the Diamond Approach um, this morning because my wife is just returning from a week-long retreat. We actually met on on one of Tejo's um, Diamond Approach retreats. Um, And... um, the the interview is uh it's, it's an excerpt from an interview on the inner critic the inner critic is that voice inside of us where we're always judging ourselves and telling ourselves that we should be doing something better we're not enough we, we should be you know more calm or spiritual or awake or you know whatever that the narrative that it is and in this interview Tejo and I really get into what the inner critic is and give you some pointers for being becoming a bit more aware of it It's an excerpt from a a full interview, which is on Conscious Life, and it was a prelude to a two-day workshop that we we live-streamed at the time and we filmed and recorded with Tejo for Conscious Life on the Inner Critic. So if you want to see the whole thing, you can sign up for a free 14-day trial at ConsciousLife.com. You better see the the, the in-depth workshop that that Tejo did. So here is Tejo Jordan and the Inner Critic. So, Tejo, I guess maybe a good starting point is, what is this thing called the inner critic? What is it? It's that part of us that won't leave us alone, that uh, tends to ride us, tends to judge us, tends to assess us, compare us with others in a often negative, sometimes positive light. So it's that sort of almost constant companion that we're largely unaware of, directing our actions and feelings, thoughts, Mm. things like that. Yeah, and I guess often when we first become aware of it, it's often quite a surprise that this thing that's been there the whole time, affecting, driving our life in a sense, that we've often not been aware of truly until we, we start to see it. Yeah, I think it's something that we align with for a very long time. We're either rebelling against it or we're doing its bidding. And at a certain point, often when we set out on some kind of path of inner awakening, one of the first things we become aware of is just how prevalent Mm. this inner voice, this inner director is. Yeah, and I guess, in a sense, when you say in a director, that's kind of what it feels like. I certainly say in, in, in my experience, it was like I realized almost 
everything in my life was being informed or directed by that voice. Yeah, and it's, if we begin to become aware of it and see really how global it is, how uh, prevalent in our consciousness, then we have to start to ask, where, what is this? Where does it come from? And often it comes with such a lot of painful and uh, debilitating direction. Mm. Yeah, and it, it's interesting that I think sometimes the more we try to be quiet, Again, I talk from kind of my. You yeah. know, I should say that I've been a student of the school and uh, you know the groups that, that you're involved in running for quite a few years. And certainly, I, I remember at the start, it was like the quieter I went, the louder it seemed to get. Um, you know, I'd be sitting there trying to meditate, and I was basically just informing myself how I wasn't doing it very well, how I should be doing mm -hmm. this, I shouldn't be yeah. doing that. Yeah, I think that we have to get a little quieter, a little stiller before we begin to notice it. Mm. Otherwise, mostly what we're sort of aware of is just the way it makes us feel, which is often we feel shitty, we feel put down, we feel deficient, we feel not good enough. And so we do all these things to combat that. But once we start to get silent, start to get still, we begin to see it for what it really is. Mm. Just a barrage of assessments and judgments. Yeah. One of the things you, you were saying before we started filming was that, in a sense, there are a couple, two different ways, in a sense, it can show up. There's the inner critic in someone's life, but there's also the inner critic in their kind of spiritual practice. I don't know if you want to just touch on that. It's a kind of, kind of helpful distinction. Yeah, I mean, the inner critic is it's this structure that really develops in childhood but it's a structure that morphs and, and, and grows with us so when we're a teenager it's probably going to judge us for how we look uh, well, what we're wearing, comparing ourselves to others then we get out there in the world and we get a job and we get constant input about how we're not doing the job well enough <clears throat> And then maybe we step on a spiritual path, and it's the same story, but now it's directed on the, I'm not a good meditator, and the person next is a better meditator. And, but the whole atmosphere is to keep us feeling a very particular way, kind of a, keep us feeling deficient in mm. a lot of ways. Yeah, and, and I guess until there's some clarity on what's happening, and we're not aware of it, we also believe it to be true, in a sense. I mean, I, it, there's a kind of whole thing of just colluding and... Uh, Very good, yeah. I think that's the... why it is so powerful, is because it feels true. Mm. We don't have another perspective once we're, when we're identified with this inner critic. And usually there's an element of truth in the judgment. So one of the things we, we have to learn how to do is separate that element of truth mm. from the you're bad because you do it, yes. you're wrong because you do it, that aggressive, very spiteful, judgmental attitude towards ourselves. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's a thing of does the punishment meet the crime? It's kind of... It's yeah. You know, as a child, our parents gave us a lot of different messages. They needed to. Mm. We were little wild animals that need to be tamed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You described my youngest daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, little wild animals need to be tamed, and the parents do their best to, to guide and, and tame this little animal soul. But the way that gets received... As a child, we're so identified with our, you know, our emotions and our actions are the same thing. Mm. You know, if we're angry as a little boy, we're, we're not just inwardly angry, it's all over the place. Yeah. And when our parents say, stop it, we take that very personally. It's a criticism about us. We shouldn't be that way. Mm. The way I am is wrong. That's the kind of conclusion mm. we come to. 
that's the same thing that's happening to us as adults or teenagers. There's truth in that maybe we shouldn't eat a whole tub of ice cream. <laughs> Probably not best for us. But is there any need, if we've done that, if we've overstepped the mark, to berate ourselves? Does that really help? Mm. I guess in that instance, it probably makes us likely to want to eat more because we want to make ourselves feel better. From, yeah, because it's attack. painful. When we get berated, it's painful. So we get in a whole relationship with this judge. And it's a combat, it's going to be a combative relationship which is keeping the engagement with it. Mm. Another option might be that we see, yep, okay, I, I did it again. I ate too much ice cream. I wonder why. I wonder why I keep doing this. So it's a more of an open curiosity mm -hmm. rather than this onslaught of judgment which yeah. just r keeps a repetitive motion going. Yeah, and I guess with that kind of open curiosity, there's the potential for something to be seen or something else to happen rather than just stay in the in the kind of the loop with it exactly and it's the loop that's so painful mm. and i think most of us have got have had or got areas in our life where we get caught in this loop of doing something a certain way an onslaught of of judgment and and putting ourselves down and then we do it again and this the same thing happens mm. there's no getting off yeah So I hope you enjoyed that excerpt from the Inner Critic interview with TJ Jordan on Conscious Life. If you want to see the full interview, and also I mentioned at the start, there's a full two-day in-depth workshop that we filmed with TJ going much deeper into the Inner Critic, then you can sign up for a free 14-day trial at ConsciousLife.com. So tomorrow it's Therapeutic Tuesday and we have the latest of these filmed mini sessions that I've been doing. And tomorrow's session is with Nicole and where we end up going in the session is, is really the idea that disconnection feeds disconnection and connection feeds connection. What I mean by that is the more disconnected we get from ourselves, the more we tend to seek and choose habits and behaviors that disconnect us further. The more we connect with ourselves, the more we tend to choose and cultivate things that take us deeper. And that's why it's so important to prioritize connection and look at the ways that we're feeding disconnection. We can really build a virtuous loop instead of a vicious circle of supporting connection. And that's what we get into in tomorrow's session. So that'll be on Therapeutic Tuesday tomorrow on Everyday Alex. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. You've tried yoga, perhaps even meditation, and you've felt calmer and more aligned. But what next? In the hustle of today's fast-paced flow, how do you live a more conscious life? Our mission is to give you the tools and support you need to live a happier, deeper, and more conscious life. We have over 200 courses and more than 150 of the world's leading teachers available to you right now. It's like going on a retreat from the comfort of your own home, whenever you want, whenever you need it. With our 14-day free trial, you can get started now and discover what's possible for your inner life.